talking about this tonight, it's easy to feel claustrophobic when you learn about the system, or maybe fatalistic. You know, nothing I can do today, just accept the system as it is. But a few visionaries out there are attempting to change the credit framework from the inside out. They think it needs some help. One of those companies, as we mentioned just a few minutes ago, it's called Zest Finance. Additional underwriting can miss many deserving borrowers. It uses only a handful of data points, 50 or even fewer, to produce credit decisions. But a lot more data is available to help you make informed credit decisions about the millions of millennials and other underserved consumers around the world. So what are these other systems outside of FICO? We wanted to explore. The founder and CEO of Zest Finance is Douglas Merrill. He is a Princeton PhD, former chief information officer at Google, and he is the evangelist of rethinking creditworthiness as we know it, especially for young people. Today, I talked with Douglas about the data at Zest Finance and his designs on the future. In terms of predictability, what do you think is the best thing to look at uh, of possible borrowers? So FICO's right that, for example, bankruptcies and how much credit outstanding you have are all signals about your financial health and by extension your, your credit health. What those don't do well is, is, is two things. First of all, lots of people have errors on their credit bureaus. So they might look like they have more credit outstanding than they actually have. And almost no one ever checks their credit bureau, so those errors never get fixed. So please, please, please go check your credit bureau. It's easy to do. The second thing that we do is we try to separate a, a, a shot in time view of your ability to repay, which is basically if you have a lot of credit outstanding, you probably have limited ability to pay it off with a bunch of behavioral things that show that you want to pay off your debt. For example, what time of day are you working on a credit application? If you're working on a credit application at two in the morning on a weekday, you probably got work or school the next morning. Right? That, like what's going on there? As opposed to I'm doing it at, during my lunch hour, well, that may yield different kinds of expectations about behaviors. Hmm. Okay. And I know you guys have dug into some other interesting things, which I was reading about in courts, including possibly even how you type and the way you choose to use language. Yeah, there's a signal which is pretty funny uh, and true, which is that if I ask you to fill in your name, so you, you your first name, Douglas, last name, Merrill, there's three different ways I can fill that out, right? I can fill it out in all lowercase, which is how I type. I can fill it out in normal case, where your first letter is capitalized, which undoubtedly is how you type. Or you can fill it out in all uppercase, which is how your grandmother types. <laughs> Turns out that if you fill out in all uppercase, you're less, uh, you're less likely to repay. It's not a huge effect, mm -hmm. but it's a real effect. And that's kind of funny. And it's about a behavior that you choose to do. And I think that's about rule following. It seems that Zest Finance, you're not saying, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, just get rid of FICO, but saying it could be outdated in some ways, or it's not a full composite of, of borrowers. Do you think that that's particularly true for young people and millennials? Very much so. FICO works spectacularly for prime and super prime borrowers. It is the gold standard. The problem is there are more than 60 million Americans who don't have complete credit bureaus and credit histories, and many of those are millennials. And FICO will unfortunately damage or, or mark down your, your credit rating for having that missing data, when actually it really shouldn't. What we try to do is use a bunch of signals that allow us to fill in that missing information and make it up as it goes along hmm. so that we can get a better guess of a millennial's ability to repay and willingness to repay. I'm wondering about transparency when it comes to places like Zest Finance and what you think the, the future holds, let's say over the next decade for credit and credit worthiness in Americans. I think that high stakes algorithms should always be publicly inspectable. You should be able to ask, why did you give me that credit score and have a meaningful answer? It turned out that a lot, you can ask that question legally in the United States, you're required to give what's called adverse action reasons, which are the reasons I, I scored you down. But those reasons are often incorrect because the algorithms are not inspectable. You can't ask them to tell you because you ought to know why we just made that really high stakes decision about you.